Hi, my name is Hitesh and I want to talk to you about something. Something that is going on on Twitter as well as I receive these kinds of email every single day. People ask me that, hey, I'm 31. Can I start learning code? Hey, I'm 51. Am I too old to start learning programming? People say, hey, I'm just 15. Can I learn to code? My background is from construction. My degree was in politics. Can I learn to code? Now, this is a regular question for me and always I have answered this question as yes. At any point of time, at any given age, you can start learning programming. It's all in your will. How strong your will is and how you can catch up the code. I have seen many people and I have actually taught many people from construction business, uh, from school teaching and they just wanted to learn code and right now they are serving amazingly at various organizations and various companies. You can learn to code and programming at any point of time. But you might be thinking that, hey, I have actually talked on this subject quite a number of times in uh, offline talks, in online videos and in emails. Why I'm bringing this up today? Now today, this question has actually taken a social phenomena and this is going on on Twitter right now. Right now on Twitter, it is going on hashtag unqualified for tech, which is similar to this question. These people are from big tech giants from Apple, from Google, from Firefox team, and they all are tweeting about their education background. They all are tweeting that right now they are leading a team of engineering for mobile devices and that is serving more than 400,000 students or people who are using their services right now. They have got a degree in politics. Some of them are from construction sites. Some of them are from a military background. Some of them are just having a school diploma and still they are at such a big stage. Now I'm not saying that they are having no degrees or diploma. That means you should drop out from a school. If you can afford the luxury of studying at a school or studying at a college, you should never drop out. I don't recommend that ever. How crappy is your college or how crappy is your degree? A degree is a degree. Everything and anything you can manage alongside of the degree. I'm never being a fan of dropping out, but in case, let's just say due to some strange reasons, maybe from a pressure from the family, some financial situation, or you really think you can do really amazing without that degree. Don't be hesitant. Don't think it twice. If you want to do it, just do it. But on to a side note regarding, regardless of that topic, let's just leave that aside. I want to say that these people are not from amazing backgrounds and I highly recommend you to check out after this video, go ahead onto Twitter and check out hashtag unqualified for tech. And these people are, re, uh, are posting down their jobs as well as what education qualification or background they are having in education. Now, unfortunately, I cannot post such things on Twitter because I do have a technical educational background. My engineering and masters were all in computers and electronics, so I do have a strong solid background, but this doesn't mean you also need that. If you have that, that's amazing, that's awesome, but this shouldn't be a hurdle. You can do programming and can do well in life without these as well. Now, whenever you are going to learn something in life, uh, whether programming or anything, it's actually tough. It's really, really tough. And I have experienced that recently. Now, I cannot say that I faced a lot of problem in learning the tech and everything. I, I'm good in it and I just admit that, that I love that thing and this love actually makes me to understand these things easily. But when I was getting started at YouTube, the filmmaking thing, the knowledge of lens, camera, lighting, this was all bad. And the very first comment that I got when I started on my YouTube channel was, hey, this is all crap, this is video is bad, you should stop filming videos. Now, if I would have got stopped at that point of time, we could have never been a family of 80,000 people on this channel right now. This is a big journey. And I had to take that journey regardless of what people are te teaching me or telling me. Now, all I taken from them is good part. I took their comments and hates as an advice. I started learning, I started improvising took a lot of online courses on filmmaking, took a lot of offline boot camps about understanding the cameras and everything. I don't say I'm perfect right now, I'm learning a lot and I will be keep learning in the future regardless of what people say. My language might not be an absolute great, my fear of camera might not absolute be gone, but still I'll be keep doing it, I'll be making videos. If I can be that much dedicated about making videos, why can't you be dedicated about learning code? Learning is a tough thing. It is not easy. 
world is cruel. They are going to crush you down for the very first code you are going to write. In case you have been on this channel for quite some time, you notice that how the Learn Code Online project went up. When I launched the very first video, the very first comment that I remember was of hate. It was saying that, hey, this is a wrong move. You should not do this, Hitesh. This is a bad move. Your website is not even having SSL. This is a bad move. You should stop making videos. But still, Learn Code Online is an amazing growing project. And I'm really excited about how this project is shaping up. This is helping people all over the globe to learn programming. From wherever you are learning, whatever you are learning, it's going to be bad at first. Not just bad, it's going to be worst at first. It's not easy, but you have to hang around there. If you want to make a difference, you have to leave all those things and all those hate aside and you just have to keep doing it until you do it just the right way. Now, obviously, a few people will be saying that, hey, Hitesh, I don't get much enough time from college or from parents or from my job that I learned to code. Now, yes, this is a situation, but it's only you who's going to overcome with this situation. It's all about priorities. Is it good job that you really want to do or you can afford to take a six month off and can learn to code and really want to switch your career? It's totally on you. The last thing that I remember that I did such thing was a job offer. Last time that I remembered after switching my job, I got an offer from Amazon to be as a researcher at United States. Uh, some of my videos of NS3 got really appreciated by the Amazon research team. They took a lot of interviews. I was really interested in getting a job at there. And the last thing that I remembered that was really crazy, I asked myself whether I want to go there or not. I refused that Amazon job offer. It was really a great offer. I'm not making enough money. What could I have made there? But I asked myself, do I really want to do join as a researcher and want to work on NS3 throughout my life or at least for the next three years? I said, no, I want to do a little bit more fun. I want to make YouTube videos. And that was a crazy, crazy decision. But still, I took it. I have no regrets at all for it. I never mentioned that usually on my videos. So all I did was start making YouTube videos. I was getting better at it. And now I'm doing really fine at YouTube. It feels really great and it was not easy for me to learn all these filmmaking videos and all these things on my own but still I did it. If I can do it who is just a random John Doe who can learn filmmaking as well as programming and all these things why can't you do it? It's all about priorities you need to set whether your current job is good enough or not or you need to do a switch or you need to get up two hours early in the morning. It's totally about priorities what you really want to do. You want to go outside and eat a burger from McDonald, which is delicious, but it's going to waste your half an hour. Or you want to learn to code in that half an hour. It's all about priorities, what you really want to do. Whether to re-watch an episode of Game of Thrones, again, you have already watched it. Or in that time, you can learn something and you can make your life a little better. Don't be lazy and don't try to act that not learning, not opening book is cool. It's not. Learning is cool. I have seen this situation in a lot of college where people say I don't read that much and people think this is cool. No, this is not cool. Those people who are not learning, who are not educating themselves are not near cool. The people who are learning to make apps, their app are being used by thousands of people. They have reached the app store. They have reached to the Google Play Store and their websites. These are people who are cool. Stop listening to those people. Learning is cool. Whenever you get free time, just open up a textbook or watch a video that is going to teach you something. Life is very short and make sure you make every second count. Do what you are totally passionate about it. If you are good in making YouTube videos, go ahead, get it better. If you want to get started and want to launch an app, this is the most perfect time. Get started and get moving. Finally, I just have one question to you. How can you sleep so easily if your app is not still in the App Store and Google Play Store? How can you sleep so easily if there is just one app in the App Store? How can you sleep so easily when the syntax of that loop of that function that you have been trying to learn from the last seven days, you haven't accomplished that? How can you sleep so easy? All the reasons that you have been giving to yourself are just crap. And you know that. And you know that better than me.
leave all those worries about what is your diploma, what is your age, what is your background, which college you are, leave those things aside and start writing code right now. Everybody's